you can deploy the best and most secure operating systems and applications today. But if you don't apply patches over time, you're going to end up with a whole bunch of vulnerabilities that didn't exist initially when you implemented the technology. In this video, we're going to cover the role that patching and patch management play to help reduce and manage the vulnerabilities that exist within your network. If this is the first time that we're meeting, my name is John Good. I'm a cybersecurity professional, trainer, YouTuber, all the above. If you liked the video, remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe for the YouTube algorithm. See the description below for resources related to this video and other ways that you can support the channel. Also make sure to join me in Discord. See the link in the description. All right, let's get into the video. What is patch management? Well, patch management is the process of applying updates or patches to existing software in order to correct bugs and eliminate vulnerabilities. Code and software is never gonna be perfect. It's just how it is. New vulnerabilities are discovered all the time and we have to apply patches, especially security fixes when they become available. Think about when you're at home on your computer. What do you do when you get a notification that comes up saying there's an update available? Chances are you just go ahead and click OK and you install the update. Well, in a corporate network, you have to be so much more careful because there are so many more components and things that can go wrong. That's where the patch management lifecycle comes in. The first step of the patch management lifecycle is to evaluate patches. We have to first start by determining which patches are actually relevant to our network. If you don't have a service running and there's a patch for it, who cares? You don't need to install it. The second step is to test patches. You want to test patches on an isolated system or network that mimics your actual production network. That way, if something goes wrong, you can actually determine it right away instead of applying it to your entire network and then having to backtrack. The third step is to approve patches. Now that the patches have been tested and we know that nothing is going to happen, we can go ahead and sign off on those patches to be deployed. The fourth step is to deploy the patches. Since we've signed off on the patches and we can start deploying them, we wanna use automated systems whenever possible. SCCM from Microsoft is actually a very common way of pushing out patches to all the systems. And then of course, we have to verify that patches are deployed when we're planning on deploying them. And then constantly throughout the life cycle and throughout time, we have to make sure that our systems are patched and up to date. Now, vulnerability management. This is the process of identifying vulnerabilities within our network, evaluating them, and working to either mitigate them or reduce their impact. One thing that's pretty common is you might actually have a lot of vulnerabilities that are deemed low risk, and you might actually not put a whole lot of effort into mitigating them because they don't really pose much risk to you. Now, how can we identify some of the vulnerabilities? Well, that's where vulnerability scanning comes into play. Vulnerability scanners will actually go out and test systems to see if they are vulnerable to known exploits or known vulnerabilities. Basically, these scanners work off known databases. So if you don't update the signatures that your scanner is using, similar to antivirus software, then it's not going to know some of the newest attacks that exist. One of the most common vulnerability scanners that you might hear about is called Nessus from a company called Tenable. But there's also other solutions out there, such as Qualys or Rapid7 has a solution. And OpenVos is an open source vulnerability scanner that you could download at home as well. Now the reporting in these tools, these vulnerability scanners is extremely important. You do also have vulnerability management suites. So all of these companies make a suite that you can tie in those vulnerability scans to but the reporting is extremely important as far as providing results, tracking your progress. Some of the tools will also actually let you accept the risk. So for instance, if you find a vulnerability that comes up in the report and you deem it to not be malicious or you know not be relevant to your network, you can actually accept that risk and that way on future scans, it's not going to alert you of that vulnerability. And it's also important to note that on some of these reporting features, they might not be the relevant type of reports that you actually want to present, or they might be too difficult to configure to your audience if you're going to present to, say, senior management. 
So whatever kind of end result data or metrics that you take away, you need to make sure that you're using actionable data. And then we have vulnerability assessments. These are extremely useful because you can actually compare scans. Say you take last year's scans and then you compare them against this year's scans. Maybe you can determine some trends or see if your vulnerability management program is improving the posture and the security of your network. Question of the day, what is a CVE in relationship to vulnerabilities? I want you to do a little bit of research and let me know down in the comments what a CVE is and why it's important. Remember to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.